Hey everybody, it's another busy day at the farm here as we're planting out our next row of citrus trees. And of course, once we're done with all of these trees, we got well over a hundred, uh, we will do a video on those. I just wanted to do a quick video talking about a subject that I think is of value to those of you who are selecting and or breeding uh, fruit tree varieties of really any sort. It could, not just citrus, but it could be you know, apples, figs, mulberries, the list goes on. There's so many different fruits you may or may not be doing this with. I found, particularly for citrus, this is of value because these trees can, in some cases, take a long time to fruit from seed. Not always, and in hot climates with lots of sunlight, you could see fruit in as little as three to five years. Other varieties could take up to 10 to 15 years. I'm talking to you, Pomelo. <laughs> some can take a very very long time now even with these varieties I'm not sure exactly how long they will take to reach a fruiting stage but I intend to make that quicker regardless of where it is so what we have in front of us here is our own selection of Thai tri which is citrus taiwanica x ponceris trifoliata uh, trifolia orange and taiwanica lemon hybrid and not just that it's not just any old Thai tri it is a tetraploid titri. So what's unique about it is it has thicker, darker leaves, thicker roots. Overall, it's much more vigorous than standard titri. And being a tetraploid, so having extra chromosomes, it also happens to be more drought tolerant and more cold tolerant. Now we haven't tested how much. Standard titri seems to be capable of surviving zero degrees Fahrenheit, if not negative one, negative two, you know, very low negatives. Uh, so I have no idea if this could even be good down to negative five, who knows? But all I know is if the fruit are decent quality and the rind isn't too thick, as it does tend to be a little thick with these tetraploids, if the fruit quality is halfway decent, if it's better than trifoliate orange, and it can survive in zone 7a, 7b, maybe even zone 6b, then this is a real winner. So I'm, I want to get this to a fruiting stage as quick as I can so I can evaluate it. And I want to send some scions to some people once we have enough material so everyone can try growing this in some colder zones. I think this hybrid, this selection of this hybrid has a lot of potential. But what this video is about is getting it to a fruiting stage quicker. So you can see this one in front of me is nice and tall here. I mean, what are we looking at? Uh, two and a half, three feet tall? And next to it is the original seedling, which it looks a bit different now than it did when it was younger. But these, the difference between these, so this is on its own roots, and it had a side shoot like one of these down here that I grafted onto a one or two year old Rubido rootstock from Madison Citrus Nursery. And as you can see now, Oh my gosh, has that graft grown? It might even be it might even be thicker than the rootstock it's on. Which is insane. I mean, that just is a testament to this variety and its vigor. I mean, it's insane. So it might it might overgrow that that graft union, but the reason we did this is by grafting a seedling onto a more mature rootstock. So at least a few years ahead, you're putting it on a larger, more established root system right, and thicker top growth here so that it, it can support and invigorate that seedling to grow much quicker and potentially give it a one or a two year head start. And I've grafted some very small seedlings. I'm talking, I've taken some seedlings, if we could get that to focus. All right, not happening. But you see the size here, maybe just a few inches tall. And I've cut half of those off, grafted it, with either a bark graft or a side veneer graft onto this mature rootstock. And then the other half will usually re-sprout, so I'll have a backup copy in case I need to graft more. But I haven't had a single one of these fail yet. Yet. <laughs> so grafting in warm weather definitely helps, by the way. I haven't had a single one of these fail yet. And then that top half that's grafted shoots way up compared to the original seedling. So this seedling might be going on its second year of age already, and it's not that big, really. It's bigger than the other Thai tri it was growing with. 
And now this one grafted just two months ago, two months ago, all of that growth already. I mean, it's unbelievable how fast this is growing and it's really looking great. And you can see the difference. The leaves are bigger and healthier and greener. They look amazing. And trifoliate orange is a great rootstock, of course. It's used for so many things. And even for a healthy plant like this, even Thai tri, which does really well on its own roots, putting it on this more mature rootstock has just given it such a head start. So I potentially saved us one or two years here by growing it this way because citrus, in order to reach a fruiting age or a stage, they do tend to need to be somewhere around the three meter tall range, maybe around 10 feet tall. They need a lot of these buds. So it's really based on like basically how, how tall it grows. These things need to accumulate a lot of buds, a lot of growth to feel mature enough to fruit, to flower and fruit. And I've seen different techniques for inducing flowering and fruiting. It still has to be confirmed on other varieties, but one particular four member who shared uh, some unique varieties with me, he girdled a Thai tri seedling and then bent the branch below 90 degrees and induced flowering in it. And I believe it was a five-year-old seedling. So we're looking at a two-year-old seedling here. This still has years to go. But just think about it. if this reaches four or five feet this year, by next year, it could already be approaching a height where it might feel more inclined to fruit. And there's no guarantee. It could still be quite a while. But I'm really excited to see this one. And this isn't the only one. This is just one example of many. I did this with all of our Sacaton uh, X 10 degree tangerine seedlings. So all of our unique hybrids that we got from fruits from Stan McKenzie's farm, where a lot of them were cross pollinating. And I've also saved unique strains of Unifoliate US 852, Unifoliate Sacaton Citromello. Uh, what else? We had a Unifoliate Swingle that kind of broke out of it a little bit, but it is still zygotic. It's different than normal Swingle, and it has more fragrant leaves. We've kind of been selecting citrus varieties that, as seedlings, are actually being attacked by the insects because they're more fragrant and they just taste better, which leads me to believe that the fruit might also taste better. So we've been taking those selections from those trifoliate hybrids, grafting them onto these rootstock, and then we'll plant them out in these trial rows where we have a mix of plants that we know will do well, and then a mix of seedlings that are grafted, and so we can compare them. But really, we're trying to select a better, cold-hardy citrus that can at least survive out here. That's a good sign, because that's already further up the citrus belt. You know, if we could get it into a zone 7B or 8A, that is great progress already. Now, if we can also find varieties, which I think like this one, can survive in zone 7A and 6B, now we're on to something. Because not everyone lives in a warmer climate, a subtropical climate. There's a lot of people in temperate climates. A lot of you up north in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, New York, uh, parts of Virginia, everywhere, where it does get a bit cooler. And you do, if you want to grow citrus, you either need to grow in a container or grow trifoliate orange. Your options are kind of limited. You, maybe, maybe dragon lime, maybe some of the citranges, which aren't always the tastiest, it depends. And the citrandarins, you can maybe get away with them, but even then you're still looking at very particular microclimates and uh, very particular precautions you have to take when growing them. I'm trying to hopefully contribute and select a variety that can be a little low, a little lower maintenance. You know, I want stuff that you don't have to surround with Christmas lights and plastic and water barrels and all this stuff. We ideally just want a citrus variety that will do well on its own in a colder zone. So anyways, guys, I just wanted to share this with you. Again, it applies to all different fruit trees you could do this for. You do this to apples, you'll give them a head start. You do this to peaches, plums, those tend to fruit sooner anyway. Um, you could do with all sorts of trees, but we're doing it for citrus trees because we do want to see some progress with these a little quicker. I mean, if we have to wait five to ten years, it is what it is. But if we could get fruit in three or four years, that's even better. That is fantastic. So we'll see how this goes in the long term. We will be growing these vertically as high as we can and kind of see what kind of progress we get with that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully some of this information is useful. 
Try it out for yourself if you got some cool seedlings growing at home. Maybe you got some fruit from Stan McKenzie and the seedlings don't look like they should. Uh, save those. <laughs> there could be some very valuable genetics there. And I think we can all do something really cool uh, if we save these seedlings. And these rootstock here, they're pretty affordable. Mass and Citrus Nursery sells them for, I think, 14 bucks, something like that. Not bad at all. Of course, you pay for shipping too. But grab yourself a few of these. Try it out. Graft it. This time of year, you can have a lot of success. Grafts can establish really quick and get grown really quick too. Again, that's just two months old already and take a look at it. But we got some others that are growing already that we'd grafted just a week or two ago. It's insane. So that's all for today, guys. See you next time.